So in the spirit of talking about the current state of open source, I thought it only appropriate to take a quick look at where we came from. Buy a PC computer, sort through all the bloatware that's installed by the manufacturer, and then create a fresh reinstall and spend the next two days updating it. Then start working. Buy a Mac. Buy third-party RAM, install that RAM, then start working. Buy a Linux PC, start working. Then trim your neck beard. <laughs> Welcome back, XD Crowd. My name is Jason. Today, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Jace, you promised us for the past three weeks an interview with Unity 3D. <sighs> but sadly, the gods of code decree that that was impossible. So I decided I would do the epic task of covering the current state of the open source movement, or rather, just the cool things I found out about open source this past week. Here we go. Now, right at the top of that list is the announcement from Google that they are partnering with edX to offer an open source MOOC. No, no, no. Google is going to retain a tight control of their cows. I am talking about a MOOC, though, which is short for Massively Open Online Course. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Jace, there are other open source MOOCs. I mean, MOOC has open in the name. That's kind of the idea. Why is this announcement uh, really news? What makes uh, a big deal about this? Well, it's really this. edX is run by Harvard and MIT, and up until currently, they have only offered university accredited courses from other you know, prestigious, well-known uh, accredited universities. And so this, the, the pipeline's only been open one way. Any student can consume those courses and use them, but not anybody can create those courses. YouTube, or sorry, Google and edX are trying to create a uh, a platform where anybody can create those courses and customize how those courses are created. Now, yes, uh, Google does have Course Builder, but this is going to enter a whole different scale. They're calling it the YouTube for MOOCs, which is really, really exciting. And you can sign up for that right now, and it's supposed to be uh, released and launched uh, in 2014. That's exciting for all these people who email me who want other options that are not Udacity and Coursera. Check that out. It's at mooc.org, links below. Now, such a talk on open source wouldn't be complete if we didn't talk about open source hardware and what's happening there. And I wanted to introduce you to a book called Maker. It's by uh, Chris Anderson, the editor-in-chief at Wired. He's one of my favorite authors. I've read uh, most of his books in the past. And this is a really good one. And he talks about the, the surge or uh, increase of in interest that has come with the Maker uh, revolution with the onset of 3D printers, consumer-friendly, affordable, 3D printers. So there's crazy things happening in that uh, area. And I wanted to share with you, I got to look at the notes here. There is a, a site called Spark Fun. It's an online retail store that sells bits and pieces of electronics that you can purchase and uh, for your own kind of maker projects. It's, it's fantastic. It's a great idea. It's all inspired by open source. Check out Spark Fun. Now the final point here is a lot less sexy, but oh so important. And we're talking about choosing a license. Now one of the legitimate criticisms that GitHub has had is that it didn't help uh, its developers really um, understand the importance of choosing a proper and a, a appropriate license. For those of you who don't know, if you create something on uh, and you put it up on GitHub, by default, that code is copyrighted and unlicensed. That's not where you want to be. If you really want to uh, further the open source movement, you have to choose the appropriate license. And most people are totally confused by all that uh, legalese. So if you go to choosealicense.com, which is sponsored and, and inspired by GitHub, they, uh, they allow you to choose a, a license according to its function and purpose. So you can just ask, look, you know, I want to be really permissive and just keep it open. This is a license or I want to be open, but I'm concerned about some patents. It allows you to, to choose that, check that out. And make sure you use that and apply it to your GitHub code. Excellent. Good luck, guys.